Hello and welcome to the MRI Safety Week video series from Metrosense. Um, today's video is we're all good now. Projectile accidents don't happen anymore. Um, I'm your presenter, uh, Tobias or Toby Gilk. Um, just so you know a little bit about me, I am a certified MR safety officer and MR safety expert. I am a two times past member of the ACR's MRI safety committee and named author to two of their um, MRI safety best practice guidance uh, documents or manuals. I am the senior vice president of radiology planning and founder of Gilk Radiology Consultants. And through GRC, I do consulting work with and for Metrosense. Um, whenever I give a presentation on MRI safety, I try to include the following disclaimer, which is that as a board member of the ABMRS, I'm precluded from giving any information that is particular to um, any of the ABMRS exams, MRMD, MRSO, or MRSE. Um, this presentation does not include that content. I am allowed, I'm even encouraged to give talks on general MRI safety concepts and principles, um, which is what we're talking about today. So uh, about projectile accidents. We like to tell ourselves that these are ancient history, that we know that magnets are magnetic and that steel is bad and that bringing the two together is a recipe for disaster. And surely we know this and we've internalized this and we don't do this anymore, except console chair and IV pole and ventilator and wheelchair and floor buffer and what about a step ladder watch these guys yanking a step ladder out of a magnet um now okay so toby you've got lots of pictures you've got some video um that doesn't mean that this is still a problem those could be from months or years or decades ago right except that all of these images are ones that have been shared within the past month. Um, now, some of them may have been from previous accidents, but the fact that there is such a bumper crop of pictures and videos about projectile related accidents in MR should tell us that this is not a historical problem. OK, all right. So so I accept that it's still a contemporary problem, but it's a contemporary problem for other folks, right? I mean, so here we have two images. Um, on the left-hand side is the wheelchair and the magnet post wheelchair meeting um, with some disturbing blood stains. Um, and on the right is an excerpt from a news article about um, a person who was killed when an oxygen tank was brought into an MR um, suite. The accident on the left hand side of your screen is from the Ukraine. The accident on the right hand side of your screen is from Mumbai, India, obviously. Um, so maybe we can take comfort in the notion that maybe in, you know, the Western um, part of the world, you know, industrialized Europe and North America, um, maybe we're beyond these problems and, and that what we're seeing yet today are emerging uh, markets, emerging countries uh, that are wrestling with you know, what for them is new technology being widely dispersed in the form of MRI. Um, yeah, no, um, this is the absolute most recent, at the time I'm recording this video, most recent um, adverse event report on the FDA's MAUD database, which means this is a U.S. accident. And you can see the date, June 14th is the event date. Um, and what is the event? A tech became pinned between a magnetic wheelchair and the magnet. Um, and the tech required stitches. They had to quench the magnet. Um, if you want to see the details of it, the URL, uh, the web link for this specific um, adverse event report is right there for you to, to be able to see. Um, and if you browse through the FDA MRI adverse event reports, 
you will see no shortage of recent examples of events that involve projectiles uh, flying in. And again, this is the US FDA. Now, while there are occasionally some extra national um, adverse event reports that make it into the um, FDA database, for the most part, these are domestic US um, adverse events. So if they keep happening, what are the steps to prevent them? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, this is from an infographic. Um, and again, the URL is at the bottom of the screen. And I encourage you to take a look at it. Um, this is an infographic that Metrosense produced with some research that I did a few years ago. And we looked at um, a couple of years of FDA adverse event data. Um, and we evaluated the projectile accidents against these three preventions. The three preventions being implement the four zone principles. Don't allow people or materiel into the controlled access point unless and until you have the opportunity to screen them. Number two, use ferromagnetic detection systems specifically for the purpose of screening ferromagnetic objects, potential projectile objects. And number three, conspicuously label materiel brought into the MRI suite so that nobody is at a loss as to whether or not this represents a projectile risk or not. And if you do those three things, um, the two years were the data that we looked at, it would have prevented 69% of the adverse event reports. Here's the thing though, those other 31% that it wouldn't have prevented, um, those are people who knew that the object, the material was ferromagnetic. And in the two years of data that we looked at, those injuries, all 31% of them, were directly attributable to MR service personnel. So another way of looking at this is these three preventions would have prevented 100% of the clinical um, projectile injury accidents. Note that I didn't say all projectile events. Uh, this was looking specifically at injury accidents, but ultimately isn't that what we're most interested in? Um, and if we have systems and structures in place to prevent the injury accidents, we will necessarily be preventing the non-injury accidents as well. Um, oftentimes we get asked the question about accreditation or state licensure, and you know they wouldn't let us operate if it was an unsafe situation. Um, the fact of the matter is that it is up to individual providers. Um, there, are, there is not presently um, a requirement for four zones as a part of any MR accreditation program. Um, there is not presently a direct requirement. There are some indirect requirements on the Joint Commission side for ferromagnetic detection. Um, and there are requirements for new construction for ferromagnetic detection, but not retrofitting older, poorly laid out or more dangerous facilities, which seems to kind of miss the, the gist, uh, if you ask me. Um, similarly, there are no requirements for labeling things in the MR environment. Um, while all three of these would directly benefit um, MRI safety and reduce the risks of projectile accidents, none of them are required today. So um, the thesis that we're over and done with, and we know better, and so we can prevent projectile accidents, just is not true. All we need to do is look at conventional, contemporary um, adverse event reports and look at recent photos of um, MRI accidents. And it should be plainly obvious to all of us that projectile accidents are still a big deal. So that's the bad news. The good news is we all have it within our power to make the changes that will help eradicate projectile related accidents and injuries from clinical MRI. Thank you very much on behalf of Metrosense, on behalf of myself. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope this video was helpful to you. Thank you.